Good day. What we are going to present today is something for Adina. She sent me an email and had a whole bunch of interesting questions. So I reflected upon those questions and I said, to answer all of them requires just seeing how they interrelate. So I will read some of the questions, or perhaps even all of them for a moment. She wants to know, how can we understand enlightenment and our problems and experiences? What is the role of dreams? How can they be understood? Why is it important not to interpret them? What is the role of reflection, usia, logos? What is the meaning of life? What is the self? What's the nature of ultimate reality? Does the self need a soul? Why, why is turning to the self practical in this curious world of ours? What is the function of true love? Does it uh, really transform a person? How? What's awakening? Ah, what's wisdom? What's philosophy? Is it practical? Can it relate in any way to human experience? Well, all of these questions are very nice, and, but they're all interrelated. So I thought I'd just make a statement here that we can look at, and then we can talk about it. First of all, the kind of philosophy that I am talking about <clears throat> is Hellenic comes out of the Greek world. Yes, I've added to it, but philosophy is the love of wisdom. And the question is, why love wisdom? Is, why is there any connection between love and wisdom? Because many people are wise, but they don't seem to show any respect for love or play a role in it. So I'll leave that aside. About the self. Here is the substance of the whole idea of self. The self manifests itself through the brilliant light of being. Now, in Christianity, the brilliant light of being is, is said to be the transfiguration experience that Jesus experienced, in which it's described in the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. It is the kind of experience that universally, independent of age and culture, that is called an enlightenment experience. So look here. And the Logos manifests itself, <clears throat> and the Logos manifests its profound intellectual nature out of the, out of the brilliant light of being. The brilliant light of being is astonishingly profound. It expresses itself as the Logos. The soul is the source and, and expresses the rational, emotive, and the basic desires of man. <clears throat> Therefore, the soul ex expresses itself in the human world, in the everyday world, through rational, emotive, and desires, or basic drives. Therefore, there's an interconnection inter between soul and self. The soul is the means through which the self expresses itself rationally, intellectually, and through its drives. Now look here. Why is the idea of self the central notion of this kind of philosophy, one fundamental reason. The very nature of ultimate reality is the self. Now that's hard to accept, but through reflection you can come to see it's true. So go right now then, let's take a look at the human problems. All human problems are expressions of unsuspected false ideas of the self. That is a primary notion. The reason you have problems is because 
fundamentally you're acting out what is implied by and, and inherent in a false idea of the self that you happen to have. And the difficulty is that you don't realize it. Therefore, it is unsuspected. Right? It is an unsuspected false idea of the self. Now, when they eradicate it, when you get rid of the false ideas of the self, that reveals levels of, of wisdom. The more you get rid of false notions, the closer you get to being more truly yourself. And the more truly you become yourself, to that degree, you are opening yourself up to the very nature of wisdom. So, to whatever degree you begin to awaken yourself to the false nature of these false ideas, that opens up a new range of experience. You're dropping the false beliefs of the self, you're more free, you're more open, you're more spontaneous, you don't have to drive yourself, and now you can reach for what you truly want and whatever you want, you want it because you can think of it, must think of it as good for you, no one else. And that thing that you're going to pursue, you're going to pursue it as a whole or as a one. Whatever it is. Therefore, what you're going to be pursuing is the good and the one. Now, to do this wakening up of false ideas of the self means there must be something in you that's capable of seeing the false, getting rid of it. What do we need? You see, we need some, something within us that can turn upon ourselves to discover the false ideas. That turning upon yourself in Greek is called usia. Now, to get to see the false image of yourself is really very simple. <clears throat> Pick up something that you think is challenging, challenging to yourself, something you may have put off. All right? Dedicate yourself to mastering it. Now, when you sit down and you decide to master it, you're going to pay attention to any daydream that enters into your mind that puts off and puts aside your concentration. In that daydream is an image of the self. That image of the self is playing a role in your life <clears throat> that undercuts the things you most love and want. Do it. You'll see for yourself. That's all you need to do. Now look here. Therefore, daydreams or fantasies <clears throat> or tangents in what we just described are a way of wakening up the mind by reflecting upon yourself and your experiences using this curious thing called usia. That's the reflexive capacity of the human mind then you can see what's blocking yourself. What do you do then? You go back to what you most want, maybe love, seek again to try to master it, and see whether coming to grips with this false idea of yourself that emerged in your daydreams is just as strong as it was before, or whether that lessens it. Because you want to see whether that image of yourself is playing a negative role in your whole life. That's all you need to know, except for one more thing. This is the heart of everything that we're talking about. When you see you're stuck, see? When you see you're stuck, and you can't master the thing you most want to do, you've been doing fine, you're stuck. That state of mind you put into words, describe it. 
then ask yourself, hey, where did I experience that in my own personal past? Can I get an early scene of it so that I can see perhaps the origin of it? If I pull up an early scene where that state of mind is present, then I can see how it was introduced into my life. So you pull apart that scene, you see who's playing a role in it, you see how you are doing within that role, that's the way out of it. You think you need more details? You don't. You don't need any more details. Look, I've been doing this for over 50 years or more. <clears throat> dreams. Why are dreams important? You don't manufacture your daydreams. You don't manufacture these tangents that occur when you're doing the thing you most want to learn and master. You don't manufacture your dreams. It's the mind communicating with the mind. It's the self communicating itself with you through the mind to know itself. Every dream is meaningful. What do you do with the dream? Hey, you know what? Take some practice. But you can look at the dream in the same way you look at this, at this problem. Look for where the problem is in the dream, where the struggle is, where it pivots. Go there and look for the state of mind and you're going to be doing the same kind of analysis. Now I have many, many, many tapes about dream work, philosophical midwifery. You're open to them all. They're all available. There's no mystery about it. You can do it. You have a mind, use it. You have a self, don't you want to know yourself? Ah, one more point. The self is the ultimate reality. When you discover the nature of the self, you will realize you always knew it, but didn't know you knew it. And you'll be astonished at your discovery, and you'll appreciate your own seeing of yourself and the self, and that's all you need, don't you? Thank you. See you then.